President Muhammad Buhari makes historic statement at the International Criminal Court, says corruption is the iniquity that destroys good governance. Minister of Aviation Hadi Sirika meets with airplane manufacturers at London International Air Show, raises hope for an efficient national carrier. Nigeria and the Netherlands sign Memorandum of Understanding on Bilateral Consultations. And the National Emergency Management Agency responds to flood disasters across the country. Good evening and thank you for joining us on NTA Network News with me, Muhammad Kudu Abubakar. Reading with me tonight is Michael Olali in Lagos and uh, Halima Yusuf Sada joins us from Kaduna. President Muhammad Buhari has made a strong representation to state parties to support International Criminal Court, ICC, with jurisdiction to prosecute cases of grand corruption as the greatest evil that destroys efforts at constructive, just, and fair governance. Delivering a keynote address at the solemn hearing of the Rome statue of the ICC, President Buhari said an empowered ICC can expand the reach of accountability. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports. Nigeria is once again at the center stage of the global attention as President Muhammadu Buhari is the only world leader invited here by the ICC to share his thoughts on the rule-based global order as part of the 20th anniversary celebration of the adoption of the Rome Statute. <laughs> Addressing the justices of the court led by Nigeria's Chile Eboy Osuji, the chief prosecutor and representatives of state parties, the president expressed the belief that in exercising its mandate of preventing impunity and punishing leaders responsible for the most appalling atrocities, ICC can also serve as a catalyst for other justice efforts, including dealing with corruption and corrupt elements. A strong and effective international criminal court has the potential to send a powerful message about the international community's commitment to accountability, a message that will be heard by both victims and perpetrators. These could include serious cases of corruption by state actors that severely compromise the development efforts of countries and throw students into greater poverty. These could also include cases of illicit financial flows where countries are accomplices and obstruct repatriation of stolen assets. As African Union champion on anti-corruption, these are issues dear to my heart. President Buhari, who congratulated the court on its 20th anniversary celebration, insists that the ICC is a vital global institution clearly needed by the world to continue to hold people accountable for crimes against humanity. Our cooperation with the court is born out of our strong belief in the respect for the rule of law and human rights and in our firm commitment to the sanctity of fundamental freedoms at international and domestic levels. The president used the forum to intimate the court that Nigeria is preparing for 2019 elections, but promised that the tragic incidents that characterize the 2011 elections necessitating preliminary investigations by the ICC will not be repeated. I assure you that all hands are on deck to prevent any recurrence of such tragic incidents. We shall do everything possible to ensure that Nigeria witnesses the conduct of free, fair and feasible elections in 2019.
describing the president of the court, Judge Chile Eboy Osuji, as a cherished son of Nigeria, the president expressed the hope that the court will continue to grow and serve its vital role as a bulwark against man's inhumanity to man. The judge assured the global community that no matter what, ICC will continue to battle forces of impunity as vital instrument of account. If given that jurisdiction prosecute cases of grand corruption, my colleagues and I would readily exercise it. And we need all hands on deck to face the challenges inherent in the fight against impunity for the world's gravest crimes. ICC was established 20 years ago through the proclamation of the Rome Statute to prevent impunity and promote adherence and respect for the rule of law and fundamental freedoms worldwide. From the Netherlands, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Still in the Netherlands, President Mohammed Buhari has reassured existing and prospective investors in the country of not only the safety and security of their investments, but also huge returns. President Buhari stated this while addressing chief executive officers of Dutch companies as part of his official visit to the Kingdom of the Netherlands. State House correspondent Adam Musambo again reports. President Mohamed Buhari noted with delight that the relationship between Dutch companies and Nigeria dates back more than two generations, hence becoming almost a blood relationship than commercial. While commending them for dealing fairly, the president urged the companies to consider building factories and sourcing raw materials locally rather than wholesale import. He promised the CEOs handsome returns on their investments as well as adequate protection. I'm, I'm impressed with, with our uh, economic relationship. The Dutch companies that are operating in Nigeria, many as they are, uh, I think they have uh, used their experience in dealing with us and uh, they are handling us with care. So we, we value your investment. We look forward to the new technology at least to uh, reinforce the huge population we have in the vast land. I assure you, that, uh, more in an enabling environment. Some chief executive officers of Dutch companies in Nigeria spoke of plans for significant expansion of their investments across the country. It is our intention to invest with our partners significantly more. And in our hands, the opportunity to FID relative short time some 15 billion dollars of projects with our partners both in the expansion putting another offshore deep water thousand meters water depth facility in Bonga Southwest to expand the LNG plant from six LNG trains to a seventh and then hopefully an eighth but also to contribute more in the domestic market for domestic gas for power generation which the growing population of Nigeria need. We're currently uh, working on a project to invest another 3 billion naira, around 10 million euros, in uh, smallholder dairy farming in Nigeria. That is a crucial uh, program uh, for us uh, to continue to work local production, but also to start operations in ready-to-drink milk uh, and not, uh, no longer based, only being based on powder uh, solutions. We plan to invest another 11 million euros uh, which we're uh, announcing possibly in, uh, next month in a future ready-to-drink project uh, and thereby also building a local factory. Uh, and, and the plan is to use 100% locally sourced milk. I have persuaded very big textile companies in China and Pakistan to relocate their operations to Nigeria on the provision that Flisco will be their customer. So they will spin for 50 million yards of fabric they will use Nigerian cotton, 10,000 metric tons, which will guarantee the livelihoods of over 100,000 cotton farmers. The investment um, in that first phase will be $120 million. I have also persuaded a Chinese construction company to build a Flisco textile park in Nigeria for 400 hectares um, of land. Over 20 chief executive officers of Dutch-owned companies were at the roundtable meeting. From the Netherlands, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. 
Back home, Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo has commiserated with the victims, government, and the people of Katsina State over the flood that claimed lives and property worth millions of naira in GBI local government area of Katsina State. Governor Aminu Bellamasari received the Vice President and his entourage at the Umaru Musa Eradua International Airport, Katsina. Bashir Bala reports. Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju pledged that federal government will compensate the victims of the flood disaster in Jibia local government area. The Vice President made the pledge while addressing victims of the flood in Jibia town. He said federal government will collaborate with Katana State government to find a lasting solution on the issue of flooding in the area. On behalf of the federal government, the Vice President prayed for eternal rest of the souls of the departed persons and God to prevent future occurrence of such incidents. Everything will be done to ensure that everybody yes. is taken care of and that we make sure that this sort of thing does not repeat itself again. Governor Amini Bella Masari said adequate measures would be forestalled to avoid reoccurrence of the flood disaster. He, however, cautioned people to avoid erecting buildings on waterways for their safety. The vice president was at the Emir of Katsana Falas to commiserate with the Emirate over the incidents. In Katsana, Bishir Bala, NTA News. 1,200 victims of the recent flood that ravaged several communities in Jibe local government area of Katsana State have been resettled in an internally displaced persons camp. Correspondent Abidu Yunusa reports that the victims have started receiving relief assistance from Katsana State government. The report. The victims, mainly made up of women and children, were camped at Jibia Central Primary School in Jibia Town, while hundreds are taking shelter with their relatives in the neighborhood. It was gathered that two trucks loaded with relief materials were delivered to the camp officials by the Katsina State government. Some of the victims acknowledged concern of the authorities toward their plight. The Director General National Emergency Management Agency, Engineer Mustafa Yunusa Mayhaja, was at the affected communities to assess the level of damage caused by the flood for appropriate action. But we mobilized already, they started arriving with uh, both food items, uh, households, like uh, women, children, uh, men clothes, uh, other related issues. We have drafted medical personnel and staff from water and sanitation department to ensure the provision of clean water and other hygienic food. In Katsina, Abidu, Inusa, NTA News. A Boeing state, Southeast Nigeria, has keyed into the federal government's ecological intervention with a project inaugurated at the Alex Ekweme Federal University, ECO. Blessing Ayao reports. By debt of infrastructure and paucity of funds due to its location, the university is fraught with many ecological challenges, hence the intervention of Ecological Fund Office. President Muhammad Buhari, represented by the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Haji Azina Ahmed, said the project, which is expected to check flooding and erosion menace in the university, is one of the 18 federal government's ecological projects approved the first quarter of 2017. Let me underscore the present administration's determination to continue with the implementation of all genuine government policies, agreements and contracts at both national and international levels entered into by the previous administration. The Vice Chancellor Alex Ekweme Federal University Ndufali Kiyuko, Professor Chinedu Mwajoba, thanked the federal government to the Office of the Secretary to the Federal Government for the huge relief to the university community. He appealed for the commencement of the second phase to give access to health, women resource and children centers. These roads are the first set of asphalt roads to be constructed and commissioned in the history of this university. In support of the Campus Green Initiative, the minister planted a tree as a memorial to the visit. Representatives of the Permanent Secretary, Ecological Fund Office, and the Ebony State Governor commended the initiative and efforts made to key into the policy. The Abuja Rail Mass Transit System, which was commissioned on Thursday, the 12th of July, has fully commenced operation to and from the Namri in Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. Shoaibu Onoiza Yakubu, who was part of the passengers that boarded the train from the Idu train station to the airport station, has the situation report.
To many of these passengers, it is a dream come true, connecting the Abuja light rail system after arriving from Kaduna via the Abuja Kaduna Railway down to the Abuja Metro Station. Comfortability is there, stress-free, no need to apply my brakes, serving my, 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 my brake pass and the rest of them, so it's easier, cheaper. This is a great thing that has happened to Nigeria. We have been praying and we are proud of this uh, administration. As a frequent traveler, this is very exciting to me to see something of this nature. The journey by train from the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport to the Abuja Metro Station within the city center takes 40 minutes. I feel very excited and happy to be in a train for the first time. Muhammad Bari brought this season for the people that are supporting us to go to the airport easily. Thank you very much. Thank God. Thank Bari. There is government intervention. So that's why we're running it free for now. For people to appreciate it, we are still conducting the, the press survey. Very, very soon, we are going to re review the pricing policy. The Abuja Rail Mass Transit Project is the first of its kind in West Africa. In Abuja, Shuaibu Onoze Akubu, NTA News. Still on transportation, ahead of the Wednesday London International Air Show, where Nigeria's proposed national air carrier is to be unveiled, Minister of State for Aviation, Hadi Sirika, is engaging manufacturers of airplanes over the acquisition of aircrafts. The International Air Show is to provide an opportunity for Nigeria to negotiate with airline manufacturers in order to get the most competitive and best value for money deal for the country. Nigeria will also explore every opportunity available at the air show to attract investors into the aviation industry in view of the ongoing efforts to establish a maintenance, repair and overhaul facility in Nigeria. Co-Marshal FRSC Boboye Oyemi has called for harmonization of data between the Federal Rules Safety Corps and the petroleum sector to ensure that tank farms comply with minimum safety standards on the Nigerian roads. He said this at a meeting with the Chief Operating Officer, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, downstream, Henry Inkem Obi, as both agencies discussed the roadmap to achieving safe haulage of petroleum products. Oemi Ajayi reports. This meeting is coming against the background of the just concluded stakeholder summit for haulage organized by the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, which was due to the increasing explosion and crash of fuel tankers on Nigerian roads. Part of the issues raised by the Corps Marshal are the presence of safety valves in all tankers to ensure contents of tankers remain intact during crashes, as well as compliance with road transport safety standardization scheme and for tankers to have number plates. But from the brief I received from my own staff, the major problem are those compromising. Because when a truck a, a, and a vehicle belongs to the union leaders, they attempt to, they will force it to be loaded. But the chief operating officer, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC Downstream, stressed the need to invest in driving schools, which he believes would have positive effect on drivers of articulated vehicles. So the world has moved on in terms of the minimum operating standards yeah. in some of the areas. So things as basic as the standards for road tankers. Both men promised that more steps would be taken to ensure that cases of tanker explosion in Nigeria is reduced to the barest minimum. In Abuja, Oye Yemi Ajayi, NTA News. Time now to go for a break to bring you more messages. We will be back in a moment. <laughs> Are you sure you want to do this? Adam, go and bring us your husband. Okay, hello baby. We're in this together, okay? Can you hear me? Keep coming forward. Wait, 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 stop, stop. <laughs> you okay, Lindsay, you alright? <laughs> Keep walking down. Keep walking down to the left. Yes. You're almost here. Keep going. You are here. <laughs> wow, you did it. I'm just so glad I didn't have to use my cane to do this. And I am so glad no other man got you before me. Let me be your eyes. We will never stop working to give you a network you can rely on so you can enjoy life's special moments. MTN, everywhere you go. 
The Senate Committee on Information and National Orientation wishes to notify stakeholders and members of the general public of its public hearing on Nigerian Press Council Act 1992, Repeal and Reenactment Bill 2018, date. 23rd July 2018, time 11 a.m. prompt, venue Senate Conference Hall, room 231, New Senate Building, National Assembly, Abuja. Special guest of honor, His Excellency, Senator Dr. Abubakar Brukola Saraki, President of the Senate. Stakeholders are requested to submit 15 hard copies and one soft copy of memoranda to the committee secretariat not later than 23rd July 2018. Soft copies to www.nas.gov.org. NG. The underlisted institutions are requested to submit memoranda and make presentations at the hearing. For inquiries, please contact the Secretariat on the following numbers. Senator Suleiman A. Adokwe, Chairman, Announcer. A famous boxer once said, the fight is won once you step into the ring. It takes massive investment. Dedication, never backing down. In 2005, Glow invested in the world's only privately owned undersea data cable, then connected this to its extensive fiber optic network throughout Nigeria, delivering flexible and affordable data and generous airtime bonuses for everyone. You see, it's not what you step into the ring with that makes you the master. It's everything you did to get you there. Glow Yakata. Get up to 6 gigabytes free data every month for 6 months and 2,200 Naira bonus for every 100 Naira recharge to call all networks where talkers and browsers live. The largest data network, GLOW, Grandmasters of Data. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. This is NTA Network News. A memorandum of understanding on bilateral consultations has been signed between Nigeria and the Kingdom of the Netherlands. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports that the highly anticipated deal is part of the major takeaways from the visit to the European nation by President Mohamed Buhari. Minister of Foreign Affairs Geoffrey Oyama signed for Nigeria, while his Dutch counterpart Steph Block signed for the Kingdom of Netherlands. The MOE is aimed at putting existing cooperation and collaboration between the two countries into a framework that is more organized and regular for greater socio-economic benefits of both countries. Yes, it will give us an opportunity to um, be more targeted uh, in our cooperation and to develop 
specific strategies. You know, so you know, for instance, in the area of trade relations, uh, it'll be an opportunity as we meet annually to bring in those sectors in Nigeria that um, involved in trade uh, matters to be part of the discussions, and they too on their side. So it'll be much more focused and um, targeted, and that will ensure that um, the results you're looking for will be easier to uh, attain. Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Oyama. President Muhammadu Buhari has submitted a supplementary budget and environment of the 2018 budget to the Senate for consideration. In the executive communication, President Buhari explained that the fund is to ensure adequate and timely preparations for the 2019 general election and other critical infrastructure needs. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sunko reports. The presidential request of 164.1 billion naira is to be appropriated to relevant agencies to commence adequate preparations for the 2019 election. To commence Senate President Bukala Saraki read the letter the from Mr. President. INEC and the security agencies have accordingly, accordingly recently submitted their request. These have been subjected to usual budget evaluation. The aggregate cost of the election is estimated at 242,445,322,000 CDs. President Muhammadu Buhari declined assent to four bills while requesting the confirmation of appointment of the chairman and 12 commissioners for the Federal Civil Service Commission. The Senate has confirmed the nominees for the appointment of the chairman and members of the Police Service Commission with Ms. Liu Adiola Kombi Smith as chairman, Justice Clara Ogumbi and Lawal Bawa as full-time commissioners, Mohamed Najatu, Brian Austin, Romy Mom and Dr. Nkemka Jumbo offer as members. We wish all the members um, the best of luck. They have a lot of expectations from Nigerians. The Senate, in a motion of urgent public importance by Senator Umaru Korfi, urged the National Emergency Management Agency to provide relief materials for victims of the recent Jibia flood disaster in Katsina State. In fact, when I called today, they said about 50 good activities. It's really horrible. So many people have lost their, their houses. The bill for an act to establish the Facility Management Council of Nigeria was passed from the National Assembly, Ignatius Mkwo, NTN News. Still on the National Assembly, the nation's quest for a vibrant public service that will sustain the goals and development of Nigeria to a greater future has received a boost by the legislature as the House of Representatives passed at second reading a bill for an act to establish the Chartered Institute of Public Administration Practitioners in Nigeria. National Assembly correspondent Laimi Ali has details. The bill seeks to regulate public administration by making provisions for disciplinary measures to curb unprofessional conduct that impede the implementation of government policies and programs, sponsored by Representative Jones Chukudi. To regulate and control the profession of public administration in all its aspects and ramifications. Also passed at second reading is the bill for authorization for the issue of funds for the Federal Capital Territory for 2018. Bill for an act to authorize the issue from the statutory revenue fund of the Federal Capital Territory Administration, the total sum of $271,531,000. The House similarly passed three bills at third reading, among which is a bill for an act to provide for the establishment of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and the motions of urgent public importance tabled by Representative Abdurazak Namdas. The House wants relevant authorities to beef up security in parts of Adamawa State to stop reprisal attacks which have claimed lots of human lives in displaced communities. Urge the National Emergency Management Agency and the Presidential Committee on Northeast Initiatives to provide relief materials to the designated camps to ameliorate their suffering. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NT News. The National Leadership of the All Progressives Congress, APC, has commenced peace building mechanisms to address the crisis involving the party's leadership and members in Benue State. 
former governor of Benue State, Senator George Akume, was at the party's national secretariat in Abuja, where Salu Abdullahi reports. It could be recalled that Benue State Governor Samuel Otom says he was no longer with the Governing All Progressives Congress, the party on which platform he has been a governor since 2015, because in his words, he said he was given a red card. The development attracted the quick response of the party's national leadership, with the Deputy National Chairman North, Lawal Shwaibu, calling for a meeting involving the stakeholders. While former Benue Governor Akume was leaving the premises, he told reporters that he would return to the Secretariat next day, Wednesday, as he did not respond to their questions. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. The National Judicial Council has commenced biometric data capturing for its pensioners from Kano, Jigawa, and Katsana states. The gesture is aimed at providing ad accurate data for prompt payment of federal judicial staff who retired from service. Muhammad Rabiu Ali has the story. The biometric data capture exercise was to update the database of the eligible pensioners who served the federal judiciary. The exercise is part of measures to weed out ghost pensioners and ensure quick and efficient system of payment of entitlements of the affected retirees. While monitoring the ongoing exercise in Kanu, the Executive Secretary of National Judicial Council, Amir Gambusale, said the council embarked on the exercise to minimize hardship encountered by its retirees. This is born out of our desire to put in place a robust, simple, fast and efficient uh, pension administration uh, architecture for the Nigerian judiciary. He said the exercise is expected to last for three days and call on eligible pensioners to present themselves for the biometric data exercise. From Kano, Muhammad Raibu Ali, NTA News. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo says the federal government is determined to ensure that lives and property of Nigerians are secured. El Hato Abdullahi reports that the Vice President was speaking while on condolence visit to the government and people of Sokoto State on behalf of President Muhammad Buhari over the recent killings in Gandhi District, Raba local government area of Sokoto State. Vice President Yemi Osimbanjo described as unprecedented and a surprise attack on innocent people by merciless criminals. While expressing shock over what he referred to as terrible occurrence, Vice President Osimbanjo see the attack as an act of wickedness to humanity. He said early warning system is highly required at the community level, saying traditional rulers should serve as vital tools toward maintaining security in their domains. Our country is a large country, very large. And there are many little communities here and there. Sometimes it's easy for these kinds of opportunistic killings to take place where you have some mad criminals just swooping on the village and killing people without any real cause or reason. And some of it is because of the size of our country. And this is one of the reasons why the president has, uh, as, a, as one of the major security measures, has directed that we look at how to put in place effective early warning systems. While expressing gratitude to the federal government for its concern on the matter, Governor Minwaziri Tambol told the Vice President that about 40 people were killed, seven seriously injured, as a result of the attack by unknown gunmen on three villages. Vice President Emu Simbanjo was accompanied on the condolence visit by the Minister of Steel's Development, Abu Karbao Buari, and some members of the National Assembly. In Sakwatu, Balat Abdullahi, NTA News. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Yusuf Buratayu has visited the Military Command and Control Center, Operation Life Adole in Maidugri, Bono State, to review operational development following the recent attacks on troops location by Boko Haram terrorist group in Bama in Bono State and Jili in Yob State. Addressing journalists after a closed-door meeting with top military officers, the theater commander Operation Life Adole, Major General Rogers Nicholas, said no casualty was recorded in the Bama attack, contrary to some media reports. While advising journalists to always confirm and cross-check 
facts. He noted that investigations are on to verify the true state of the Jili attack and stressed that troops have been deployed in search of the fleeing terrorists. This soldier in Burma, we only had one officer and one soldier that had gunshot injuries. And we did not lose any soldier in Burma. I emphasize that again. We didn't lose any soldier in Burma. We had, we had some casualties in the Jili, and like I said, we are managing that very well. Um, details of this uh, attack in Jili will be made known in due course as security situation warrants. The Nigerian Air Force says there is absolutely no iota of truth in the all allegations that it prevented a chartered flight from London at its base in Makudi, Benue State, on the 16th of July for political reasons. In a statement, the Director of Public Relations and Information of the Air Force, Air Vice Marshal Adetokumbo Adesoya, said the NAF base Makudi is not a dual user facility, but one constructed strictly for military purposes and in line with the global best practice. He said there is a clearly established procedure for non NAF aircraft to operate in and out of the runway in Makudi. He stated further that in the case of Benue State Government request for permission to land, NAF granted the request. However, around 5 p.m. on the 16th of July, the Nigeria Air Force was verbally informed that there was no need to change the aircraft for which permission had already been issued because the aircraft had developed snags which made the Nigeria Air Force to ask for another written request in line with the established procedure which was not received. The Nigeria Air Force reiterates that it does not concern itself with political or religious affiliation of individuals or organizations in granting landing rights at its airfields and the issue of security and safety remain uppermost, particularly with the ongoing operation Will Struck that has been coordinated from the Nigeria Air Force Base in Makudi. Michael in Lagos has the next set of stories. Hello, Michael. Thank you, Kudu, for joining us in Lagos. It is one year now after a wave of kidnappings were reported in some community schools between the Lagos and Ogun State border. Jen Ojuku in this report takes a look at steps taken to ensure safety in schools and to reassure parents of the safety of their wards. The report of the abduction of six students from a model college in Ibonla in a bare local government area of Lagos State in 2017 is still fresh in the memory of many Nigerians. That incident, which was the second incident in that particular school, was one of the series of abductions recorded in some schools last year. This worrisome development brought to the fore the issue of safety and security challenges in the learning environment in which many Nigerian children are exposed to. NTA News undertook a visit to Model School Ibonla one year after the second kidnapping incident. This is what the environment now looks like. But how secured are schools in such vulnerable areas? We have static guards in all schools. All schools that are vulnerable, that are close to the creeks, that are isolated. Then secondly, we have regular, regular motorized patrol. We also have closer synergy in line with the principles of community policing and safety partnership with the locals. Some schools, observers noted, are disasters waiting to happen due to the level of dilapidation of the infrastructure. If reinforced, it will definitely run on the children. Lagos State Government reacted this way. If there's any school you see that has an issue, I can guarantee you that we know the school, we've mapped it. And what we've tried to do is to um, engage the schools um, based on how the gravity of the issues in the schools. Observers say all stakeholders should collaborate to make the learning environment safe, secure and conducive. In Lagos, Jane Ujuku, NTA News. Meanwhile, towards supporting Lagos state government in maintaining adequate security in the state, Fidelity Bank PLC has presented a 50 million naira check to the Lagos State Security Trust Fund. Executive Director of Lagos and Southwest Eneka Onye Ali Ikwe says the financial institution is encouraged by the performance of security agencies in the state. Abola de Salami reports. Lagos, as a cosmopolitan state with a population, of approximately 20 million people, no doubt needs to be secured against all forms of criminal elements. In view of the relative peace and security enjoyed in the state, Fidelity Bank PLC, one of the leading 
financial institutions in the country is partnering with the state governments in the area of sustaining the secured environment. Executive Director Lagos and Southwest Fidelity Bank Nneka Unyali Ikpe says the presence of security officials at every nooks and cranny of the state, in addition to their swift response to distress calls, prompted their support. Security is everything. I mean, if, if the environment is not safe and secure, you can't do anything. It's, it's obvious that the government needs to be supported for this initiative, and it's in the interest of everybody, because I have 80 branches in Lagos and have over 2,000 staff in Lagos alone. So uh, the, the best that you can do as a, an institution that's responsible is to ensure that you give, uh, you, you, you assist in whatever the government is doing to make sure that the environment is secure for you and your customers. The Executive Secretary, Lagos State Security Trust Fund, Abdurazak Balogun, lauded the initiative of the bank with an assurance that the state government will not relent in its efforts at safeguarding lives and property. There's, no, there's nothing we accomplish in the state without a robust security. That is very laudable. I mean, the Fidelity Bank has been pretty much um, consistent over the years. And again, this is another testimony to that fact. Fidelity Bank PLC has donated over 170 million naira to the trust fund in the past 10 years. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. You are still watching NTA Network News. More reports ahead after this timeout. Please stay with us. A beautiful life and a great future is possible. Stand with Standards Organization of Nigeria. Avoid substandard products, electrical appliances with damaging effects, tires without DOT number, stuffed and rusty edges. They can cause accidents. 12.5 kg LPG cylinders used as cam gas is a disaster waiting to happen. Substandard cables can cause inferno. Other substandard products to avoid include batteries, electrical bulbs, iron rods, pressing iron, brake pads. They will only endanger our today and future. Join hands with SON in reading our country of substandard products. Don't buy or sell substandard products. See something, say something. Call these numbers. Standards Organization of Nigeria. Improving life through standards. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the daring and invincible Louis the Mosquito. Responsible for 200 malaria cases all on its own. Is there anything that can kill Louis? Party! Presenting Morty's Soul Guard. Its powerful formula kills malaria mosquitoes fast. So, get Morty's Power Guard. The House Committee on Sports cordially invite all stakeholders in the sports sector and sports enthusiasts to a two-day national sports summit with the theme, Growing Nigeria's Sports from Grassroots to Championship, Excellence and Sustainable Development under the distinguished chairmanship of Governor Akinwomi Ambody, Governor of Lagos State, Co-Chairman, Barrister Nyeson Wiki, Governor of River State, Special Guest of Honor, Barrister Solomon Dalu, Honorable Minister of Sports and Youth Development, Chief Host and Keynote Speaker, Right Honorable Yakubu Dogara, Speaker, House of Representatives, Co-Host, and Haji Mohamed Belu, Honorable Minister of FCT, Royal Father of the Occasion, His Royal Highness Sanusi Lamiku Sanusi, Emir of Kano, Fathers of the Day, General Yakubu Gowon Retired, Ibrahim Dejam, Governor of Yobe State, Oba Otu Depo, Mother of the Day, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, Wife of the President, Date 23rd and 24th July 2018, Venue, Nikon Luxury Hotel Abuja, Time 9 a.m. Daily. Other important guests include NOC President, President Sports Federation, State Commissioners of Sports, State Directors of Sports, and Directors of Sports in Ministries, Departments, and Agencies. Resource Persons, Professor Sherwin Amortayo, Mitchell Obi, William Baba Tunde Fowler, Executive Chairman FIRS, Professor Ebenezer Morakinio, Dr. Al Hassan Yakut, Short Talk, Shagun Odebami, Angelo Peter Elosia, Amaju Pinik, Professor Niba Tanglan, Discussant, Dr. Amos Adamu, Dr. Patrick AKG, Dr. Ademola Are, Director Grassroots, Aisha Foladi. For more information, please contact Okeyinka Matthew, Global Sports Council, on 0818552268. 0805-238-336 Suleiman Fatai, Clerk, House Committee on Sports on 0806-771-3438 0818-556-8873 This advert is proudly supported by NTA Africa's largest TV network Announcer, Honorable Goni Bukarilawan Chairman, House Committee on Sports <laughs> The International Monetary Fund, IMF, upgrades Nigeria's 2019 gross domestic product forecast and the Nigeria Stock Exchange recorded Tuesday's session on a red. Details on more on business news with Musa Abubakar.
Hello, welcome to Business News. The International Monetary Fund IMF has upgraded its growth rate forecast for Nigeria's gross domestic product in 2019 to 2.3%, while retaining 2.1% for 2018. The IMF announced the upgrade in its World Economic Outlook update for July 2018. The 2019 GDP growth forecast was 0.4% percentage points higher than the 1.9% announced in April this year. Though the IMF retained GDP growth forecast of 3.4% for the Sub-Saharan Africa in 2018, it upgraded its forecast for 2019 to 3.8% from 3.7% announced in April, attributing it to rise in commodity prices. The Nigerian Stock Exchange extends loss to close Tuesday's session on a bearish note. The All Share Index declined 0.81% to close 36,963.73 basis point, with market capitalization at 13.3 trillion naira. 203 million shares worth 2.3 billion naira was traded in 4,178 deals. That concludes business news at this hour. The Nigeria Television Authority has expressed willingness to collaborate with the National Assembly, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and other institutions to deepen local participation in the capital market. Director General of the NTA, Malam Yakubu bin Mohammed, said this when he received members of the House of Representatives Committee on the Capital Market and other institutions in Abuja. Vivian Idegbefo has the report. Data from ProShare Nigeria reveals that total transactions on the Nigerian Stock Exchange from January to May 2018 increased to 1.409 trillion naira from 714.99 billion naira in the corresponding period in 2017. This represents a 97.13% increase, though foreign investors outperformed domestic investors by 21.25%. The House Committee on the Capital Markets and other institutions, while on a visit to NTA, identified low level of awareness among Nigerians on the immense benefits of investing in the different products and segments of the market as some of the factors responsible for low participation on the board. I've not realized that there is no meaningful development that is possible in any economy without capital market taking its rightful place. Director General NTA Yakubu Ibn Mohammed stressed the need for continuous public enlightenment and pledged the support of the organization to project policies and programs that have positive impact on the economic growth of the country. This administration has made it very clear of its intention you know, to fight corruption, to fight insecurity, and to ensure economic growth. And this is one aspect you know, of the policies of this administration. So NTA would be quite willing to, uh, to partner with all you know, institutions, agencies, and bodies you know, such as uh, yours, you know, to advance the cost of this country. Nigeria's capital market was adjudged the third best globally at the end of 2017. In Abuja, Vivian Idekbefo, NTA News. Media practitioners have been charged to operate within the ambits of the National Broadcasting Code and ethics of the profession in order to uphold national unity. This is part of the resolutions reached by media executives and other key players in the industry at the 2018 National Broadcast Content Summit held in Enugu, Enugu State. Ngozi's Sylvia Technikio reports. The 2018 Broadcasting Content Summit organized by the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, aimed at bringing media operators to brainstorm on better ways of using the media to promote positive democratic culture in Nigeria. Enugu State Governor emphasized the timely significance of the summit. Deepening democratic culture in Nigeria will certainly among the other things engender more peaceful and sustainable political development. The Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohammed, represented by 
Charles Ojubana, and also the Senate Committee Chairman on Information, Senator Suleiman Adokwe, laid credence on the role of broadcast media in information dissemination. The industry is flooded more by political owners than the professional. Political democratization will be unattainable, unavailable if the citizens are not actively engaged in the political process. It has also spiked in recent years various forms of conflict related to the fault lines that define Nigerian existence. On no account should broadcasters kill a story based on the individual's political leanings. The summit was organized for media executives in news, programs, and marketing departments of broadcasting houses across the country in Enugu, Ngozi, Silver Technical, and TA News. When I join Halima in our Kaduna Network Center for more stories on NTN Network News. Over to you, Halima. Ahmad, you're welcome to Kaduna Network Center. National President Vote Guard and Awareness for President Muhammad Buhari Kailani Muhammad has called for a united front of APC members towards the 2019 general elections. Kailani made the call in Kaduna while speaking to newsmen on the state of the party. Benny Adams has the details. Alhaji Kailani Mohammed said APC has provided purposeful leadership for the country for more than three years now, and it's high time for its aggrieved members to put national interest above personal gains by working together to consolidate on the good works of President Mahmoud Buhari. Buhari brought AKK. The pipeline from Ajokuta, Kaduna to Kano. And when that one is commissioned, there will be massive job employment for, for our people. Our industries will, will come back. Kailani appealed to the president to wait for the report of Tinubu Peace Committee with a view to personally wading into the crisis in the states. On the issue of insecurity in some parts of the country, Kailani commended the efforts of the various security agencies in taming the tide, advising those who might want to destabilize the peace to desist. No matter how highly placed, offenders must need to be prosecuted and meted out adequate justice to serve as deterrent to others of like minds. The national president of Votes Guard for Buhari appealed to Nigerians to be patient with the present administration, adding that better days are ahead. In Kaduna, Benny Adams, NTA News. Federal government has trained 100 farmers on biological method of preventing and controlling army worms. Fatima Sanusik Arai reports that the benefiting farmers were drawn from five states, including the federal capital territory, Abuja. The federal government policy towards enhancing food security is gaining acceptance among farmers in the country. To support this drive, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development has trained peasant farmers on how to control armyworms in their farms. It also provided free improved maize seeds, fall armyworms insecticides, sprayers, and protective kits. Some of them describe the gesture as commendable. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Chief Audu Ogbe, represented by Dr. Adela Kim of Tahu, noted with satisfaction the Buhari administration's commitment to support farmers to attain self-sufficiency in food production. There is an outbreak of a fall armyworm in Nigeria. It started in 2016 and uh, it has spread to the whole states in the Federation. In Kano, Fatima Sanusi, RI, NTA News. And that's it from Kaduna Network Center. It's back to Mohammed in Abuja. Thank you, Halima. Director General of the National Council for Arts and Culture, Otumba Shegun Reonshawi, has commended the Federation of Tourism Association of Nigeria for the peaceful resolution of the crisis among the practitioners. Tumba Renshawe says in a statement that the settlement of crisis will pave the way for the progress of the tourism sector in Nigeria. He promised to support the association in order to put tourism in the front burner as one of the revenue generating sectors in a diversified Nigerian economy. 
We'll now take another break. We will be back with more stories. Don't go away. Advancing inclusive governance through legislative openness for national development and growth is the first of this week's edition of NTA Tuesday Live. NTA Tuesday Live on the 2018 National Assembly Open Week promises to be incisive and informative. Don't miss it. And in sports, Maiden Nigerian University's Football League set to kick off. And fans.